<laughs> Xander's like, dog, man, you've been drag teasing this thing with these linebackers for two hours. Let's go. I'm going to get to it here in a minute. I promise you here. Oi. Huh? All right. I'll get there. I'm going to do my top 10 linebackers, my big sales top 10 linebackers here. Um, Big Sills, what are your thoughts on the DT Brandon Fisk out of Florida State? Considered in the scheme, we need another DT. He's a good football player. He made a lot of big plays last year for them. Um, I think they did a really great job of recruiting defensive front linemen. They've been killing the University of Miami the last three years, and especially up front. They got, they got some quality guys there. I think Mark um, – I think Mike Norville has done a really nice job. Okay, I really do. I think he's done a really nice job in recruiting. And to me, that they recruit like a Southeastern Conference team. That kid's a good football player. Okay? He's a good football player. I'll get there in a minute, but I guess Larry Holmes is like going around. He's really proud that I acknowledged him. So, hey, Larry, if you're in here, have a great time on your podcast and um, congratulations to you. Okay. So just want you to know, congratulations to you, Larry. Keep punching away. <laughs> hey, you got, Hey, you made me notice Larry. You made me notice. So I think it's because of Xander though. But other than that, <laughs> Hey, you're lucky Larry that Xander Krause knows what's going on because I really don't know who these people are. Shit, I didn't know who uh, Harry What's-His-Name was when I was doing the middle. <laughs> I didn't even know who Harry was. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's not nice. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I don't even, I didn't even know who Harry. <laughs> I know I'm, I should stop. Warrior, you've been killing it today, man. I, you've been killing it. <laughs> I don't even know who Harry is. <laughs> As Andrew goes, we had some stiff on. <laughs> no one asks anymore, please, until after the time. <laughs> you too, huh? All right. One last thing. All right. Stop thinking that Ava Braun is going to be a better linebacker than TJ Edwards. He's not. Okay? Ava Braun is not going to be a better linebacker than TJ Edwards. I hear everyone going, this guy's going to be great. He's not. Okay? He's going to be a special teams. Twiz, Ava Braun is not going to be a great linebacker. Give me a break. All right. Without further ado, before I get hammered. Not drunk. Hammered. The Big Sills top 10 linebackers. For the Eagles delight that I have handpicked. Okay, these are the potential prospects that I've watched. Okay, let's start down at the bottom. Jalen Ford, Texas, 6'3", 240, was a five-star recruit when he was in high school. Um, here's a guy with big size, can play the run. Um, I don't think... He's exceptional because I don't think he played. Here's the problem with him. I think he has really great skills, but I don't think he played against really great skilled people. And when you don't play against really great skilled people, do you know who the best player he's, he played against? The people on his own Texas team. And when you have something like that, that's a problem when you're not being in a competitive situation, which means you don't grow. He was a five-star kid at Texas and never fulfilled his destiny at Texas. He was supposed to be one of the elite players. And it's because of the Big 12. Now, that's dynamics going to change. You know, when Texas and Oklahoma go to the Southeastern Conference, 
How many wins do you think uh, Oklahoma and Texas are going to have over the next three years? Seven wins a year? If they're lucky, they'll beat Kentucky. If you think you're going to go into the SEC and you're Texas and OU, and you think you're going to go in there. Now, here's the one thing that I will give OU and Texas. They're going to have a ton of money. A lot of the Texas money with nil are going to go to those programs. So they're going to be good in three years, but the first couple of years, they're going to struggle because of them playing better competition weekly, week in and week out. When you're, when you're Alabama, you're playing Georgia, LSU, Texas A&M, Florida, Tennessee. This is every week. You don't get a day off. You know, when, when, when Alabama plays Tennessee Chattanooga, fuck, they need that. Because then they got Auburn usually on the other side of that. That's a tough stretch. Number nine, Tyron Hooper, Missouri. I'll tell you one thing, 6'2", 230. That Missouri defense was good. They are going to have about three or four players get drafted off that starting defense. Missouri was a sleeper in the Southeastern Conference this last year. They did a hell of a job. That was a good unit. I didn't think their offense was all that good. But Missouri made a bounce back. And this is one I think they got a D lineman, an edge rusher, and a corner that is going to get drafted in the first three rounds also. This kid's a good player, and he's a big kid, 6'2", 230. And I think he's a great athlete. Again, you know, he's in a bunch of guys that are in that 90, 91, 92, 93 kind of rating. So you're not going to have a lot of drop-off. I think these 10 guys are good. Good enough to play and make rosters. Number eight. Here is the only sleeper, and he's out of Seth Joyner's college. Trice Knight, UTEP, 6'1", 230. I don't feel this is good enough for the Eagles because you're already kind of undersized at that position in the inside. Your right inside linebacker and your left inside linebacker are barely six feet. And I want a little more size inside there. He's a really good player. But again, this is a competition thing for me. Who's he playing, UTEP? I mean, right? New Mexico State? San Diego State? Okay, those are good. That's a good program. But really, you're playing Mountain West teams. Utah State? You know what I mean? He looks good on film, though. Now, here is a guy. I want you to listen to me, okay? And... Here's something to think about. James Williams, University of Miami, 6'4", 230 pounds. Here is the hidden gem with him. Again, I told you, a little mouthy. But you know what you can do with him? You can put him up in a three-point. You can put him in a four-point. He can even play some defensive end, beef up a little bit because he was – 248, 251 last year. He's dropped some weight because he's in the linebacker group. But he's a versatile dude that you can do multiple things. And remember I said James Williams. This is a guy that Vic Fangio covets. This type of prototype. Okay? No, well, hey, 11, 17, he could be University of Miami or he could be Southern Cal or he could be the University of Washington. In my opinion, it really doesn't matter. It's a skill set. You can stand him up. You can put him in a three-point. And he can play an end for you and set the edge. So he's kind of multi... Yeah, fitness. He's like Michael Parsons, but more physical. He was a four-star four kid going to UM. And again, they had a really good defense last year. Their offense just was wobbled all over the place. And it put him in bad situations. They beat Clemson, and he was a fixture on that game. He's a good football player. He just needs to control himself. You know, I've I've talked to him. He's called me a ton of times. How'd you do it? I go, not well. But I had Jerome next to me. And as much as Jerome was mouthy, 
Jerome knew how to control himself. I wasn't the best. He was he was a little better than me. Um, next guy, six. I just think Trotter Jr. is too small. He's six feet, 228, 230. I think he's too small. I think he's Nakobe Dean 2.0. I think he's a good football player. Um, I just personally think, hey, will somebody do me a favor? What was the size of Joey Porter, the kid from Penn State? What was what was Porter's size? Because I got, I mean, was was Porter the same size at six foot two thirty? Was he in that conversation like that? You know what? And 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 for me, Jeremiah Trotter. I mean, look, the name is sexy, obviously. Um, he's okay. So, um. Porter was 6'2", right, Steve? Yeah, man, that's that's kind of where you want to be. You want to be 6'2", 235, some shit like that. You want to – 6'2", 192? Mm. 194? He was a linebacker? Wow. He, he had a great year in Pittsburgh. He had a great year. I don't know, man. I'm a little bit suspect on Porter's size. Okay. I think so too. Anthony, I hate to say it, but I think Trotter's another dean. Oh, Joey Porter's a corner. 6'2, 194. I thought, I thought they played him in multiple positions at Penn State. Am I wrong when I say that, guys? I thought they dropped him down in the box. They put him in nickel, uh, nickel slot, and they also put him on the corner. I thought they played him all over the place. I I hate saying that about. Uh, Trotter Jr. Okay, here's the five guys now. Now, these five guys, in my opinion, are separated from the rest of the other five. You got Junior Colson, Michigan, 6'2", 238. He's a good football player. Sideline to sideline, and they won that national championship with two reasons. They ran the ball, three reasons. They ran the ball, they played lights out defense, and they didn't turn the ball over. That's how Michigan won that national championship. And Junior Colson may have been the best player on that team. He was just electric, man. He is a good-looking football player. Sideline to sideline again, can drop in coverage, can play the run well, it's tough as hell, put his nose in the gaps. He doesn't make false steps. Man, he was good. Mm. This kid, Cedric Gray, I saw somebody bring his name up earlier. UNC, 6'2", 235. That's great size. Um, He was I'll tell you one thing Mac Brown did. Mac Brown did such a great job of recruiting at North Carolina. Hey, he's put a ton of guys in the pros. He's done a spectacular job at being the head coach in North Carolina. And they've done it on both sides of the football. There's going to be a ton of guys drafted out of Carolina. Shit, the quarterback's going to go in the top five picks. I mean, he's a good-looking player. And, boy, that defense did a job on Mike Haynes and a lot of teams inside the ACC. Not a huge ACC guy, unless it's FSU or Clemson. Those two programs are the best programs in the ACC. The rest of them, you know, Miami recruits well. They got to win. Number three, Traven Wallace, Kentucky, 6'1", 237. He's a pack kid. Man, I know Xander watches Southeastern Conference football. When you put on a tape of a Stoops defense, Mark Stoops was a coach at Miami, University of Miami. And when you put the tape on of this kid, Wallace, I mean, let me make a comparison. He runs like Fred Warner. He's not quite as big height-wise. Who was that other linebacker that the 49ers had that just got elected to the Hall of Fame? That kid Wallace is really good. Put a Kentucky game on. It doesn't matter if it's Bama, LSU, AM. This guy knocks people out. He is a great looking prospect, man. Like I said, 6'1, I'd like to have a little bit more, like 6'1, 6'2, 6'3. He's like Patrick Willis. Willis played at Virginia. And this kid 
Draven Wallace, man, he can play football. He's really a good looking player, man. Number two, this was a tough debate because I've been pushing one of these guys to be the top guy. I've changed my opinion. I got Edgerin Cooper, number two, Texas A&M, 6'2", 230. Fabulous. Just athleticism, five-star kid. I think Dumbo Fisher in that defense was awful in how they coached him, how they used him. They should have moved him around more like Miles Garrett and played him like Garrett more. Um, he He's just really a good-looking football prospect. You know, he's a little shorter than I thought. I thought he was going to be in the 6'4 range, but he's 6'2", 230, and he's inside. Man, I'd love to have that kid inside. The... You put him next to Devin White, you're, then I think you changed the linebacker room. You put him in there, I think you changed your linebacker room. Okay? Bryce Huff, Devin White, Edrin Cooper, um, and Nolan Smith. I could change the room a little bit. And I got Peyton Wilson. Uh, North Carolina, 6'4", 235. Absolutely spectacular. Best prospect. Everything you want in the guy. And you got to remember something about the linebacker position. Before I bring Howard Cross on, and I, I bet you Howard agrees with this. You know this kid, Brock Bowers, that's coming out of Georgia? You know why he'll make a bigger impact than anybody in the draft? Because the linebacking position in the National Football League is not what it was when Howard played. Howard was in the league when you had Mike Singletary, Lawrence Taylor, you had Wilbur Marshall, you had all these great players. Ron Rivera was great. Uh, Wilson was great. You had all these great cover two type linebackers who could fill the gap and cover tight ends. You don't have that in today's NFL. It's a mismatch position, and it's why the tight end position has become so prevalent in many offenses. All that is all that said, we'll revisit this here, but.